everyone. This is Anne from Odulcino Scrap. Today I want to do a quick project with you using a CD a paper sleeve envelope that has been coffee stained of course and then we're gonna just embellish it and then later on we can put anything we want there. We can glue it to a junk journal page or just use it as a pocket or just uh, as an insert somewhere. I'm going to be using the little girls that are f and flowers that are fussy cut with my quick cut machine. So you can either fussy cut from the digital kits I have or uh, you can as well buy those uh, girls in my Etsy shop. I'm going to put the link in the description below. Sometimes we have an idea like with that coffee filter. I thought it was a good idea, but it was too bulky. So I ended up... Uh, using that uh, fabric, which is my Odulcina fabric, the green polka dot on a vanilla background. I have the same polka dots on a white background, but the white was just a bit too much contrasting with my CD envelope um, that has been coffee stained. And even the little girl is more in the, the off-white tones than white. So, and that's why I had to do different polka dots like different pinks and some with a white background and some with a vanilla background because we just can't go with just one but anyway i'm creating a ruffle with the odd glue as you can see i just put the odd glue on about an inch uh, in size and then I flatten and twist the fabric to create some folds and I keep going on if you try to do it in one shot deal the whole length um, that can be a challenge I tell you so the best is really to work in sections when you use the uh, odd glue so I thought using a little piece of an herbal tea would work fine so I'm gonna just glue the, the initial part and then I move down creating some folds again and this will kind of add a little bit of dimension it's not hiding too much the polka dot and it kind of creates um, a background to the little girl as well so this is the trick when you're trying to layer things you need to have something really thin that is almost like um, one color, no pattern and everything. This is why I love so much the cheesecloth and those herbal tea bags. So now I'm going to use the, the cheesecloth, which is the grade 90 cheesecloth. You find that on Amazon. And I'm going to put the link in the description below because I get that question often um, through emails or comments in the videos. It's really not the one that you're going to find at the dollar store, which has bigger holes. So this one is the gray 90 and it gives you that really thin fabric, which is just perfect. And how I make it all folded like that is I cut pieces and I put them into water. Then I squeeze them and I let them dry uh, squeezed. And then a couple of hours later, let's say half a day later, I come back. I, um, I unfold it and fold it back again so it keeps drying with more folds. And it takes a good day or two to completely dry, but uh, it gives you those uh, pieces of uh, cheesecloth that are all folded, like perfectly done for you without too much trouble. So I just figured out where I wanted and now I'm ready to put the little girl. So first I'm gonna ink it, of course. And now I'm going to use the glue, the odd glue, because I'm gluing it on cheesecloth and a fabric ruffle. So it's wavy and it's bulky. 
and the fabric tack would work though but i wouldn't use the art glitter glue for example so that works really great and again you you saw me i glued the little girl in two sections just because gluing the little girl at once would be just too much for the hot glue it would have time to dry a bit too much so now to balance that i'm gonna add a little piece of cheesecloth on the other side and maybe add those flowers so i'm just playing a little bit to see which one i like but i ended up using only one flower because sometimes too much is like not enough right so simplicity is most of the time the best <laughs> so i ended up with just one flower as you're gonna see and i'm gonna ink the flower to give it some dimensions and uh, actually i ink it to hide the white of the of the paper because we just don't want to see the white so and it kind of creates a little bit of shadow if i can say and that uh, that is part of the dimension a bit too and now i just need to complete with a little bow so i have um, fancy yarns that i made available in my shop on um, wood clothes um, pins and uh, but it was too bulky so i'm using here the seam binding that like the cheesecloth i made it wet with water and i i squeezed it and let it dry um, all folded and in a bulky like ball and uh, that creates all the folds like that so this is the way it works um, and now you just don't want to glue a little bow like that that would be just not enough dimension so i'm gonna use the fancy yarns just to add more dimension so because i it was too bulky to add it with the seam binding in the bow i'm gonna just glue a little piece like that behind the bow and it will look like if it's part of the bow but it's it's just to add more dimension so just a little piece of glue should hold all those fancy yarns together and just adding a little piece of glue to glue the bow on top of it and that's it look at that so now i'm missing a little thing at the top left corner and i don't want it to be too bulky but i thought i could use one of the words that i have on my little dresses fabric so between all the squares i've put some words numbers there's french words there's english words so i'm gonna go with that lovely word and this is how you should uh, tear your labels you go piece by piece because we don't know if it's gonna tear straight all the time it's been done industrially so it's more straight than when you print on your fabric or you had one that i did but but still you cannot go and do the whole length in one shot it might deviate from a millimeter or two so i suggest you go piece by piece and in the between you can get those little words as a little label and i'll just set that little word the lovely word on that lace that's it this lace it's coming from a cloth that i just it's it's already a ruffle that was sewn to a cloth and i just recovered it <laughs> so but i like it it's the job is done for me so now i thought i could put those half pearls on the edge of the window the circle window and that would kind of remove the gap without adding too much details to the envelope so this is how i deal with those half pearls that are um 
I bought at the dollar store. They don't have any glue, which is perfect because anyway, even when they come with glue, the, I always add more glue because I just think that the glue is not enough most of the time. So I've cut them and I've cut the little threads to my best and I'm using tweezers to to grab them because I don't know for you but I I put more glue on my fingers than on those half pearls when I try with my hands but with tweezers it works the magic as you can see so adding the art glitter glue a little dot of it and I can put the half pearl on top of it and look at that this is really really like it's a detail that I often forget to add into my creations even if I have tons of them even if they're the cutest thing to add but really like adding half pearls in your projects just a row of three somewhere or uh, to do the edge of something on one side or all the sides I think it's always always a good idea so this time because the window is a circle I kind of had no choice to think about something that is not that that I can have a movement within it so and this is why I separate all the half pearls but otherwise I think we could I could have glued the um the half pearls as a row like they come and just give them a little circle angle kind of but I didn't try I just separated them I find it's it's a finishing touch that I like, not seeing the thread between the, the pearls. Um, but, you know, it's a personal taste. So, that's it. We have now a CD sleeve envelope all decorated. I could decorate the back if I want to use it as an ephemera holder or just as an ephemera. But in my case, I won't glue anything because I think I might glue it, use the, the flap to close the envelope to glue it to a page. So I'm not putting anything at the back, but later on I can. When you cut a piece of paper like that, just keep that piece for another, like you have the tiered edge there. It's always good for any other project. So I'm trying different options to put inside the CD sleeve holder just as a background for the window. But then if you put something in, inside the envelope, it would be between that paper and the window. So on top of it. But just for the sake of it and just to complete my project, I thought I, I could glue a paper inside the, the CD envelope just to put something in that window as a decoration. So I'm trying different options. This is a really cute green paper, but I find it's too dark. I've tried the music sheet, as you saw. I'm trying this old paper, which is lined, but my favorite is that coffee stain paper that has been 3D embossed. And I'll just go with that one. This is really like tone on tone. It has details, it's really, really cute. Just make sure that the length is good, like it was a bit still too long, so I'm gonna trim it again. And I don't put too much glue because it is a challenge to go put the paper at the good place inside the envelope with the glue there. So I'm just putting glue on the sides and I'm trying to slide it till the bottom before it really touches the the envelope and then when I knew it wasn't the good place I started to put pressure and use the bone um, bone stick to flatten everything and that's it look at that so I hope it inspired some of you and uh, thanks for watching see you in the next video bye bye